Hey guys, welcome back to another Rust base tour. This is my base on this vanilla server. I'm basing with my wife and my brother and his wife, just the four of us. And I actually built one of my YouTube bases for this wife. It's my 120 rocket 3x3 from another video. I'll, I'll put it in the description below. This turned out really well. This is the first time I've ever actually built that base on a vanilla server. I've built it on the build server many times, improving it and such. And I like it. It's fun to live in. I, I know that sometimes whenever you design that really cool base on a build server, you try to use it on the vanilla server or on a live server and it just doesn't really work out. Well, this one did. It's, it's been a, a super duper secure. It's been a, a real treat to live in so far. It obviously doesn't look quite like the 3x3 in my other video. I've had some added some things to it and some decor and such. This is what it looks like at night on the outside. Let's go around and look at the inside. I made it a point to start this video at night because the base looks pretty amazing at nighttime. So this is the front entrance here. Both the ramp here. This actually leads down into the horse area. So we have a, a way to get from the horses coming in from outside. We have a secure way to get up to the base right here. The auto turret protecting us. And this is the inside. We have Brownie. This is my daughter named him. This is my the horse Brownie that my daughter named. Brownie is crucial to the space. And you can see that we've made it nice and cozy. There's my brother Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. That's the chill zone in the corner over here. We're making big use of the industrial update, as you can see. Tell you what, whenever you use the electrical furnaces, though, eh, a bit of a charcoal problem. So we've been <laughs> having to buy charcoal and, and find charcoal and rated bases and decayed bases and such to make up for our use of the electrics. I know this looks like an, an, an RP base, you know, a QT RP base, but it's actually really, really, really strong. I know that uh, 120 rocket 3x3 sounds like that's impossible, but I'm telling you it's not impossible. This this base is bare minimum 120 rockets to get main loot, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. This is actually our raid defense area, so we have some beds up here for raid defense. We actually did get online raided. We were raided on day three. By the, uh, they rocket trucked us, and then after they rocket trucked us, they started coming through their front doors with C4, and they made it right here because of the shotgun traps, and and uh, they got countered, and we got their C4, and it was pretty hilarious. But we actually did get online raided, and we figure if they're gonna come in the front door having a raid defense that funnels down into the beginning like this is gonna be paramount. So we have extra kits and things up here to help with raid defense. That's if they come through the front door, but this this base really isn't designed to be great at raid online raid defense. It's designed to withstand an offline raid. Alright, let's take a look at the outside now that it's daylight. We have our RV truck, which has allowed us to farm unbelievable amounts of resources this wipe. N literally like nothing I've ever done before in Rust. And the reason is right here. It's that code lock. The code lock is ridiculous. I haven't played Rust in a few months, and whenever I found out they had added code locks to the cars, I'm like, uh, are you serious? So you just take it out through the snow biome or wherever you want to go, wherever the, the rocks are, and you fill up your, your truck with with uh, stone and ore, and if you die, it doesn't matter because there's a code lock on it and the bad guys can't get in. And then you just respawn in your RV and get a new kit keep going. Like, it's really, I, I really think it's going to get nerfed, but we'll just keep that between us for now. Trucks, cars with code locks on them are unbelievably good at farming is, is I guess, my, the point here. We have the uh, auto turrets on Peacekeeper. I like to keep them on Peacekeeper so people can come and check out the base if they want to, and they don't get shot unless they share their ass, which 
obviously some people have shown their asses because that's because it's rust this is actually where we keep our mini copter and you can see that there's no mini copter in there and it's because a guy killed me and took it we'll get another one though we have plenty you see the wind turbines they're not nearly as high as i usually make them I actually usually max them out at 18 stories for the power generation I just wasn't really feeling with this wipe. I know that their power generation is really, really bad whenever... I mean, it's not bad per se, but it's much, much less than whenever you raise them all the way to the top. But they're putting up, putting out enough for the turrets and the lights that we have so far. On top, we have our water catchers. And that serves as a, a water supply for our farm. My wife's been growing food and berries and stuff in the... The farm area, which is right in there. You can see this This base is actually pretty damn big. This is probably the biggest base. This, no, this is the biggest base I've ever built in vanilla before. It's a 3x3 three three at center, but we added you know one layer of honeycomb all the way around, and then another layer of honeycomb, which are these uh, you know interesting rooms that you're not really sure what they're for. Like, look at this one. If you look up through the window, it's like, wait, you know, what is this? There's boxes. There may or may not be things in those boxes. But this is just serves as a point of confusion for the enemy, that they don't really know what these rooms are for. You know, wh where do we attack this base from? Should we blow into these? Do we need to blow into these? Would it be better to go in this way? We have the mini Satori externals, which are still incredibly useful. Yes, I know about the trick that you can do with your hammer and figure out which one is the master one, and therefore you only need to blow the other. I know that, I know that. But most people in Rust don't know that, so it still helps to have more than one. The frame rate getting kind of low. I actually upgraded my computer last fall. I have a, a Ryzen 5600 and a Radeon 6950 XT, which was the best GPU in the market at the time whenever I bought it last fall. And the super powerhouse CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and it's this base is still it's the, the issue is the CPU. It's it's CPU limited. Rust is very very hard on CPUs. Facepunch actually released some metrics about Rust on their blog, and we're talking about what's going on with uh, the hardware stats and everything. And uh, it's it literally proves that Rust is very difficult in CPUs. put these twigs here to make the bushes go out of the way. I wish that they would permanently stay out of the way. Whenever the twig goes away, it, the bushes pop right back up and block the panoramic view of the base. Alright, so how does this base work? What's the, the big strength of it? The strength of this base is with Brownie here. Brownie is our loot transfer horsey. We take Brownie to the four corners of the base, and yes, I can actually fit him through the base. There's one here, that's one corner, and then there's a corner back here. One over there. And then we have one right here. And then there's one down there at the loot area too. And what we do is we put Brownie's head into the wall here. See that? See how his head is in the wall? And then, uh, suicide. Thanks, Jeremy, for the thumbs up there. And I spawn in my northeast resource bag, which is an armored bunker still in the base. And I examine the horsey, and I can move loot in and out as I see fit. And that includes my... Uh, incredible amounts of, of metal and components and stone that we farm this way as well as our rocket cash and gunpowder and so far and this is not like a a uh, five pop server like it, it was close to 100 on the wipe day it's obviously died down a little bit because the clan wars and such but we've been we've been busy this way so the the what makes this this base so strong and the reason why it's literally a, a 120 rocket three by three is because if you have the four corners of the base sectioned off into these armored bunkers like this 
and you use and, and then you honeycomb this this square room you honeycomb this with triangle metal then and then you you separate your main loot into these four areas of the base and all four of them are, are full like this then if they want all of your loot they have to blow all, all four honeycombed armored bunkers and that bare minimum is it, you know after, after all is said and done getting through the other uh, mess of the base and even if they like, like best case scenario if they knew how to raid this base it's going to be you know close to 100 rockets but it, it's going to be more than that you can see in my other video that it's it's almost always going to be more than that so this is a, a super powerful design it's the the horse head glitching through the wall it serves two purposes one it, it lets us transfer loot through or two layers of, of honeycomb but secondly it's two layers of honeycomb that, that the enemy doesn't even know exists there's no drop boxes moving loot in here there's no pipes coming in here through pixel gaps or anything like that the enemy doesn't know this exists unless they're using esp and there's so much going on with this base anyway that their esp may not even help them identify this as a loot room so it, it's it's not just an ultra strong loot room for ultra strong loot rooms in the base they're also it, there's a great chance that the enemy doesn't even know that they exist and that's really really powerful stuff in rust And we do that for the four corners. So we separate our loot out into the four corners of the base. We move the horse over there, we glitch his head through, which I still can't believe hasn't been patched out. I hope Face Punch continues not patching it out because of how unbelievably good it is. And that's how our base works, and that's why it's so strong. Uh, people, you know, get all these other, and, and the, what it does is it also gives you the freedom to design bases like this. You know, it, it lets you design really fun, unique bases that are fun to live in because you don't have to build these armored core, all your loots in the very center of the base or all these crazy twig bumper, bunkers and stability bunkers. So you don't have to do any of that. You just need to separate your loot. And the, and the, 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 horse, the horse glitch lets you do that. We are making heavy use of the industrial update so you can see that we have the electric furnaces going these furnaces are actually connected to the conveyor we use these as charcoal makers so it'll pump ore into those and wood and export the charcoal and the ore back into the the main loot box over here we have another conveyor that goes out to the refinery outside so we don't have to go outside for our refinery it's uh it's, it's really nice and i, I want to mention one thing that is an absolute game changer with the industrial update and it's the auto filling tc so you see the this is the loot box that we keep our metal and our high quality and wood and stone in and you can see it's connected to the conveyor and the conveyor goes over to the tc over here it by the way just as a side note make sure that with this base don't put your tc in one of the four corners like i recommended in the other video just put it out like this because if you put it out like this they're not going to go looking for it you don't want them to look for it and if you have externals outside then they're not going to be able to grief your base anyway that was a, a good tip from from someone in in the the last video but the 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 industrial conveyor feeding the tc constantly like this you can see the the upkeep time is at 19 hours and it stays there all the time so we're no longer worried about you know who's going to log on and and fill up the tc or i don't i can't go on vacation because my base is going to decay like it's not a thing anymore. The, the limiting factor of building big bases before and high upkeep bases was that someone had to be there to fill up the TC and you don't have to do that anymore. And it takes so much stress off of playing the game. Now you just make sure that there is plenty of materials in this box here and you can just go up and up and up. I never would have built a base that, that had this much upkeep before the industrial update. I mean, we're at like 17,000 metal something, you know, 17,000 stone, almost 100 high quality. I, I never would have did that before because, but I can't even fit a whole day's worth in the TC, but that, that that's a, that's, that's gone now and, and it feels really, really good. All right, guys. Thanks for tagging along in this base tour, and I'll see you in the next video.